Um, yes, hello again. <laughs> um, I guess I've already sort of given you a general introduction to my uh, research this morning, so I'll just very briefly elaborate on this. Um, so this morning I was saying that I was initially looking for a number of uh, international media events that I could use for comparative analysis, but I found that this was actually too, com uh, too complicated uh, in the sense that the events weren't symmetrical enough across countries. So one event would be you know, a big media event in one country but not in the other one, etc. So, so then I figured, okay, I'll look more particularly at a number of political leaders and how they interacted uh, with the mass media. Uh, and like I described this morning, uh, a useful way to find relevant leaders was to actually yeah, do sort of these co-occurrences of sort of looking for leader names and then colonialism, Africa, and then I could, uh, it was a more easy way to find relevant uh, political leaders that were playing a prominent role in the, in the early mass press. Uh, and then I, I zoomed in on these. Uh, so I ended up choosing, yeah, choosing five political leaders that were particularly sort of famous <laughs> at the time. Uh, and also in the secondary literature, I discovered that they, they were very advanced in terms of uh, thinking about how to play into the mass press, how to react, how to change their speeching, how to change the timings of political communication and so forth. So in a way, the first modern political leaders. Uh, and I guess the, the study or what I'm trying to do, uh, or the way in which I'm trying to be innovative here, uh, is, is partly also by not only doing the newspaper analysis. So there are a lot of historical studies on sort of, you know, how was this uh, phenomenon described in the newspapers at the time. And then you have many historical studies that focus more yeah, on archival documents, on correspondence, etc. And I'm trying to bring the two together to see both sides of the story. So how did, uh, how, how did newspapers write about politics, but also how did political leaders start thinking about press management, public relations, uh, spin doctoring, things like this. I mean, in very early forms, uh, but, but ways to manipulate also the newspapers. And there's quite a lot of this, actually, I discovered to my own surprise, like a lot of <laughs> journalists being bribed, etc. Um, <coughs> but even then, the, um, <coughs> there's, there's way too much material, you know, turn of the 19th century, you had more newspapers than now. Uh, so I, I still needed a way to filter uh, all this <coughs> material. Uh, and one way is obviously to do that through keyword searches, but the other is conceptual in the project itself. So I did, uh, in the end, narrow it down to six sort of smaller media events in which I could then analyze these leaders. And I made sure that, that every leader would at least appear twice so I could see if there was sort of a learning curve uh, so that because of uh, sort of public indignation in the media at, at something this leader did, that later on in time he, uh, he would behave differently uh, with regard to the media. Uh, I won't go into the, the events themselves. It's the most important thing is just that, uh, yeah, I needed ways to sort of limit material, right? Um, and then, um, yeah, I guess my approach is very conservative in, in yesterday's terms, that I'm not <laughs> using a lot of the things we've been talking about today, uh, un unfortunately, in a way. Um, but there are reasons for this, um, and this is partly as I described this morning, that to, do, to really derive sort of um, strong st statistical conclusions from the material, the, the databases are too different. And also I found, um, like for example, with frequencies that were just mentioned in, in from your project, then initially th I thought, oh, this could be interesting to see how, how important these leaders were, etc., in the media. But then I ran into a lot of problems with also, which I partly described, that names were used very differently or certain leaders always went by one name and others had five, six different ways to describe them. And you can sort of correct for this, but it, it became so messy that I didn't want to really base a prominent part of my study on this. Uh, and the other thing was that, or what I found in, uh, uh, in previous studies that people say, oh, monarchs started playing, for example, a big role at the turn of the 19th century in the press, uh, but then the researcher would only study these monarchs. So it's sort of, uh, you know, selection bias, and I was very afraid of this, that if you just search 
for uh, monarch, monarchical names in the newspapers, you get a lot of hits. Like uh, the frequencies are quite high, but but in order to compare that to other politicians or other even uh, sort of private persons starting to play a larger role in the, in, the, in the press, you really have to do a lot of frequency runs and compare all those. And some of you might actually have interesting methods for that, but I wasn't aware of how I could do that in sort of a non-messy way. Uh, so I'm just close reading newspapers. Uh, I'll, I'll finish there. Um, if there are any questions, uh, let me know. Thanks, and um, yeah, so questions, suggestions, uh, also welcome, I think, yeah. Yeah, yeah so now I'm getting curious, what, what does your ideal tool look like then? <laughs> the, the one that you will use? Uh, well, ideally, um, I could basically enter, oh, it's a bit what was described in, in the last study where you compare, you know, socialist concepts to non-socialist concepts in a way to see their prominence but the problem I'm finding is how would you define the non-entity here that I want to see how important was one political person in the mass press but in order to compare this yeah I would need to enter all other political leaders and compare them or something so I'm not sure how I would do that so, so my ideal tool would here be Okay, this is what I'm looking for in terms of frequency for, for this person, this name. Um, however, I want to see how frequent it actually is relative to the frequency of other political names, but without having to manually enter every single politician in 1900. And yeah. Um, and, and I yeah. Uh, and I guess something more easy more easily done is okay better co-occurrences but this works in some of the like the times database works quite well but like I described this morning Belgica press and so like it, it doesn't work well enough to do something with it like it's not uh, reliable enough so to speak thank you thank you. we better move on but yeah. thank you more, uh,